rakaraki tai, e yaki nā te atākura, e teo, e hoka, e hauhu. Tihei mauri ora. Um, I go to declare the annual general meeting for EON's um, Education Outdoors New Zealand, uh, being held via Zoom on Thursday the 10th of June 2021, formally opened. Um, just for those who are here, we'll go through a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have something you'd like to raise, uh, can you use the, the wave hand function uh, on the bottom of your screen? Uh, so um, if you click on more, it will give you the option of waving your hand. Um, if we need to uh, show a vote, uh, that'll be the means of voting by raising a hand. Um, and uh, we may need a wee time to, to count through those. Uh, Fee McDonald, our, um, our executive officer, I should get this right, Fee. What are we, what are, you are our CEO. CEO. CE, okay, Chief Executive. So um, we'll, we'll do the counting for us uh, and um, we'll go through that. So, um, yeah, but if you've got a question, please use that wave hand function. If you could keep your microphones on mute uh, while the meeting's conducted uh, and, until we give you a, a floor to speak, that'd be, that'd be appreciated. Um, and there's the chat function uh, also for any questions. Uh, so please make use of that. Um, and uh, we, can, uh, we can respond to that as and when um, we, we see that. Um, <clears throat> Thought I'd quickly introduce uh, the members of the executive that are here. Uh, so I'll introduce myself, called Phil Washburn Taka Ingwa. Um, I am the current co-chair. Um, Sophie uh, Watson, the other co-chair, unfortunately is ill today. Uh, she, so she's unable to be with us. Um, we also have <clears throat> Dave Irwin, uh, who works at Ara, uh, Caroline Reddish, uh, who teaches um, Whakatane area, sorry, Caroline, I can't remember which school you're at. Uh, Sharon White, uh, who teaches at Te Pā Rakei Hautu or uh, Te oh, Pā Fiona, Oro Rakei. Oh, Fiona, could you tell me how to hear you? Oh, Liz, can you not hear? Uh, hmm. Kia ora, Liz. Um, you may need to just uh, connect out and connect back in again uh, and uh, set your device up for audio. Because we can hear you. I'll, I'll keep going. Uh, we've got Alan Hill as well. Alan uh, is at Ara. And um, I can't see any others of the executive. Uh, Celia's um, here. Oh, Celia. Uh, Celia, who um, uh, Celia Hogan. Can anyone uh, tell and, me how to get hear what you're saying, please? Um, oh, shit. I'll um, send Liz a message. Oh, you keep going. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, great. Um, apologies uh, that uh, we've received so far. Um, uh, we've had apologies from Mountie, who is unable to be here. Uh, Sophie, of course. Uh, Fee, do we have any other uh, um, apologies? No. At this point? Okay. Um, so we'll move into business uh, and look, I just need somebody to move that uh, apologies volume. be accepted. Where's the volume? Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Catherine's moving for um, apologies to be accepted uh, and if somebody could second that, we'll... Al, thank you. Alan Hill seconding. Uh, and uh, yeah, a little show of hands, folks, if we can for... Um, uh, passing that in. You may need to hold your hands if you're physically holding them up. You may need to hold them up for a while so Kath, uh, Fiona can can see that. You're up. Thanks, Fee. 
Uh, we'll move on to the minutes. Um, uh, we've circulated the minutes and uh, we're going to take those as read. Um, so I'm going to move that the minutes for the 2020 AGM uh, be received as a true and accurate record. Uh, and I need a seconder for that. Uh, thanks, Mike. Was that Mike with a hand up? Oh, it's a guitar in the background, Mike. Sorry. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike boys to second that. Uh, and if we could just have a show of hands, please, to uh, uh, move those minutes in. Um, do we have any uh, any um, anything from those minutes that anybody would like to raise for discussion? Great. Um, so we'll move on. Um, so um, look, Sophie and I had uh, carved up the, the annual report to talk to. Uh, so um, bear with me. I'm going to just quickly go through the uh, the annual report, uh, and um, it's been circulated. And uh, you know, we'll table it as read. Uh, however, I'll, I'll I'll speak to certain things. Um, firstly, uh, you know, Eons has has uh, put itself in a in a strong financial position uh, that's not for, for lack of a bit of nerves at times uh, but we've uh, managed to secure significant funding going forward uh, and some of the, the projects that we've been we've been currently working on uh, are looking uh, safe and solid for the future uh, but we've also got um, some uh, initiatives in the pipeline that are, are, are going to be uh, well funded and supported as well so um, uh, you know, a bit of work going on behind the scenes um, from a number of, of EON's um, staff to do that. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're in a very good position. Um, it's been a, it's been a significant year of change. Uh, we'll, um, uh, we've appointed um, a, a number of extra roles uh, and uh, Catherine Capel after um, many years of, of service to the organisation has stepped aside and uh, this has left us uh, with a, quite a gap to fill uh, and we've appointed a number of people to do this. Uh, so uh, one of the, the, the roles we're going to uh, initiate this year is the Chief Executive role, which, which Fiona is currently filling in an interim role. Uh, we've also appointed an Administration Officer uh, is Joe here at the moment? Yeah, she is. Um, yeah, Joe, if you could wave for those that want to put a face to the name. Uh, so, um, Joe Hayes has been appointed to that position uh, and uh, will fulfill some of the administrative roles that Catherine uh, once, once uh, fulfilled. Uh, we've also appointed a um, a grants and funding administrator, and that is Rosemary Such, uh, and um, she is uh, working on a project basis to uh, secure further funding for the organisation. Um, a number of uh, changes within the executive. Uh, Fiona, in her role as chief executive, has stepped down from the executive. Uh, she uh, so she will have um, a, a role in terms of advising the executive, but will no longer be a voting member. Uh, we've appointed Sharon White uh, as uh, we've co-opted Sharon White uh, as a um, a member uh, for her expertise in uh, Maori medium, uh, and that will go towards our our eons. Tertility journey, uh, which I'll speak to next. Uh, one of the things that the, the executive has been working on over the last um, uh, last year is our tertility engagement. 
uh, including some time uh, in, in a face-to-face -face weekend, uh, exploring some of those, those next steps we need to take as an organisation. Uh, that'll be ongoing this year as we move forward. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to, um, you know, making some significant steps towards a, a real a partnership um, uh, with uh, Māori in the sector and in the area as we're going forward. Um, number of uh, major initiatives that we are continuing with, including revisioning school camps, uh, the EOTC management, uh, PLD, uh, and these continue to be well supported uh, and will the, these PLD op opportunities will on go, be ongoing uh, through the next, um, next immediate period. Um, last year, we host, we, uh, EONS uh, hosted its first conference in a number of years, uh, which was uh, based on a, a model of a, a distributed um, conference with a number of hubs around the country. This was well supported despite the, uh, the challenges of COVID and um, yeah, it was, was a, a, a general success um, uh, and uh, was thanks to a, a lot of effort, including um, uh, working committees in the five different regions, as well as a central organising committee uh, to bring that about. Uh, there's a lot going on in the sector. Uh, the ROVE, the Review of Vocational Education, the NCA Review, uh, they continue to um, present us with both challenges and opportunities, uh, and uh, we will um, continue to work in those spaces. Um, Sophie Watson is in the process of uh, developing a new resource um, yet to be named, but based around uh, the concept of menstruation in the outdoors um, and work, work's going on to uh, not only fund a, um, a resource, but a series of supporting resources and videos that will, will go alongside that. So it's a pretty exciting uh, initiative. Uh, we're looking forward to see that, that roll out as, as the year progresses. Uh, there's also a, a project that we've, we've been working hard to bring across the line uh, around uh, which we call the DIY camping initiative. Uh, again, that's something that we'll, we'll continue to work on and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, have resources um, for people to draw on in the, in the near future. Um, financial report, um, and uh, we, we leave the year with a significant um, a significantly strong position uh, in terms of both the reserves and, and funding sources for the immediate future. So um, significant uh, thanks need to go to Catherine for uh, the management of that, of the considerable streams of, of funding and, um, and the number of uh, initiatives that we are, we're carrying. Um, and uh, yeah, she leaves the, the organisation in a very strong position. So look, I'm gonna um, uh, ask, I'm gonna move that uh, the report be accepted. Um, and um, yeah, I just need somebody to follow that with a seconding. Do we have somebody there, sorry? Alan seconding that. Alan Hill to second that. And just a show of hands, folks, to um, pass that on. Uh, financial statements have been circulated um, and are going to be taken as read. Um, just opening uh, to any questions on that front. Has anybody got questions around the, the financial statements? All right, uh, moving on then, uh, I move that the... Um, Uh, I move that the reviewed accounts be approved. 
there's somebody who can second that. Thanks, Celia. Excellent, thanks, Celia. Um, and if we can just show our hands on that, please. Right. Um, moving on to the election of officers. Uh, this year we had four nominations for three vacant positions on the exec. Um, uh, Fee, can you remind me of, of who those four candidates were, please? Uh, we had Phil Washbourne, Caroline Reddish, Dave Cassidy and Sophie Milne. Uh, so... Um, Thank you for taking time to vote, those that did. Um, it's our first attempt at online voting and didn't go without entirely without a hitch, but uh, once we got it underway, it seemed to work well. Um, so I appreciate you taking the time to do that. Uh, we can uh, announce that the successful candidates were uh, Caroline Reddish, Dave Cassidy, and Phil Washbourne. Um, and so congratulations to Dave for your for being elected to the board, uh, both myself and Carol and the current board members. So re-elected to it. Um, uh, the next uh, item is the naming of the auditor. Um, and uh, the motion is that Zane Colville from Taxation and Accounting Services review the 2021 financial statements. So I'll put a motion that Zane Colville from Taxation and Accounting uh, review those statements. Uh, can I have a seconder to that, please? That was Liz Tevenard. Thank you, Liz. Uh, and if we could have a show of hands, that'd be great. So I've got a couple of little uh, of motions just to follow through, um, or one, uh, and uh, before we move on to some general business, um, and these are just functional really, uh, but um, there's a motion that the spokesperson with the IRD and bank accounts, the signatories to the bank accounts, and the spokesperson for media for the following year be determined at the first meeting of the national executive after the AGM. And this is just to allow us to do our general business as an executive. So um, I'm going to put that motion. Can I have a seconder to it? Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, is there any discussion on this? And if not, then uh, we'll put that to a vote. If we could have a show of hands, please. Great. Right, uh, so having got through with some of those formalities, uh, we're now into the area of general business. Uh, and um, I'm unaware of any items here. Uh, Fee, do we have anything to run with in terms of this? No, not unless someone from the floor has got something they'd like to bring up for general business. Yeah, right. So we'll put it to the floor if there's any, any sort of general business uh, members would like to bring to the floor. Okay, there not being anything to discuss, uh, we'll bring it into uh, the uh, period for uh, presentations and discussions. Um, and um, we'll start um, with, uh, now is, is Alan? Yeah, so Alan was gonna kick us off for this bit. Right, so I'll just get Alan Hill to um, speak to us um, and introduce Mike Boys and the Tetumu position within NEONS. Thanks, Al. 
Uh, kia ora, Phil. Uh, kia ora koutou. Uh, ko Alan Hill uh, It gives me great pleasure to um, introduce a, a very close friend of mine, uh, Professor Mike Boys. Uh, and Mike um, holds a very special role uh, for us here at EONS. Uh, te tūmu herenga waka herenga tangata, uh, which, which uh, loosely translated means the post that binds the waka also binds the people. Um, this title was gifted uh, to us um, by uh, uh, Hemi Hoskins, who is, uh, 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 was our head of Māori at ARA, is now um, head of the Humanities Department and Director of, uh, Associate Director of Māori Achievement at ARA. Um, and it was, it was gifted to us as a, I guess, recognition um, of a person who has shown uh, sustained uh, and long-term leadership um, of our sector in all sorts of different roles um, over a long period of time. Uh, and so uh, when Mike was, um, I guess, awarded his, his life membership, um, he, was, he was awarded this position, um, Te Tumu Heringa Waka a Heringa Tangata. Uh, so uh, kia ora Mike, it's nice to see you on the Zoom uh, today. And uh, I believe that you've got something for us now, so I'll hand over to you. Uh, kia ora. Thanks very much for your introduction, Alan. And I have to say, um, I certainly feel very privileged to be a Tatumu Helena Waka Helena Tanata. Nā mihi nui, kia ora. Probably the highest honour a professional organisation can bestow on an individual is life membership. And to receive life membership, a person needs to have made an outstanding contribution to Eons over a significant period of time. To my delight this evening, I am honoured to announce the award of life membership of Education Outdoors New Zealand Liz Penman. Liz personifies outstanding contribution and over an extended time frame. I know it's a long time because Liz was at the very first Outdoor Education National Conference held at Wellington Teachers College in 1982. I have pleasure and heart to pass to my good friend Arthur Sutherland, who will tell us more about this. Thank Kiora, Arthur speaking. Can you hear me, Fee? Yep, you're good to go. Good to go. Oh, I'm on my phone. I was having an internet connection <laughs> problems. Um, so, about Liz Penman. Well, my few words go like this. I'm, I'm unable to be certain as to whether it's 40 years or 45 years um, <laughs> in terms of being an educator, because as I understand it, Liz uh, started off at uh, St. Cuthbert's College, probably in uh, 1978, uh, as a games captain. She um, went to... Uh, do a diploma of physical education at that great establishment, uh, the University of Otago. She went into teacher training. I'm pretty sure that was in Auckland. I noticed it was called the Teachers Training College back in those days. And she took up um, a role at um, St. Guthrie's on the staff there. Um, a full-time job as a physical education teacher. 
Um, and she was heavily involved in sports such as cricket and hockey. And um, she uh, took young people kayaking down the Whanganui, um, including a dear friend of hers, uh, who we all know as affectionately as Chongi, Linda Chong. Um, I understand Liz um, finds the Whanganui to be a spiritual place that she's visited multiple times with many different groups. Um, you know, Canadian canoeing, kayaking, just enjoying the environment. Um, the, uh, tonight we're recognizing Liz in terms of uh, being a physical education teacher, a health educator, and an outdoor educator. She um, attended a workshop uh, run by Project Adventure Inc. That's the USA um, organization. And the workshop was being led by um, a fellow known as Carl Ronkiri. Uh, Liz was to the fore during that workshop. In typical fashion, as we all know her, she put out a challenge and put, put pressure on Carl around the uh, matter of gender equity. I'm sure you're not surprised to hear me say that, those of you who know Liz really well. She became a, a, project, a, a project adventure trainer. And today I understand that she is one of, if not the longest serving accredited project adventure trainer in the world. I hope I've got that right, Liz. Um, she went on to establish a company, Adventure Works, um, and um, she subsequently sold that. She's got involved in training all over the country. And my son Guy well recalls uh, the beginning of a relationship with Liz in terms of professional relationship in terms of out, matters outdoors. When he was a 14 year old and was the cook at the Boyle River Outdoor Education staff training, and Liz was running the staff training, he quickly became not only the cook, but the rescue scenario person. He uh, had to hide and be rescued. He had to get up on top of the high ropes and um, wait until the staff were able to rescue him. Um, and through her project adventure work, she became an advisor, these days a technical advisor in terms of ropes courses, but also in the beginning to do with adventure-based learning. And I understand that, um, Liz, you've written many a unit standard. Likewise, you've reviewed many a unit standard. And um, you're now involved in um, auditing Uh, and the program that's known as Outdoors Mark. In 2019, the industry recognized you when they gave you the Supreme Outdoor Award as an outstanding leader. And there is no doubt about it that your time, your contribution has been outstanding as Mike suggested, definitely the word I wrote down and um, not only here in New Zealand, but you've also contributed in places like the USA, Italy, Korea, and maybe there are other countries we can add to the list. The Koreans, of course, were fascinated by the fact that here was a woman that was providing instruction and in how to safely use a ropes course. Um, they had a bit of trouble um, saying your name so i think in korea you're known as miss riz i think um something to do with the l's and the r's getting mixed up there but it's my pleasure to um contribute to this award by these few words and i think 
it's simply that you have been outstanding and I welcome you to the life member, the Eons Life Member Club. Kira. Kira Arthur. Uh, now, can everyone see my screen? Hopefully this is going to play. This is another wee message. You're all. Hello, Luke. It's a privilege for me to thank you on behalf of the current Eons Exec team for all your effort and contributions. And thanking you also on behalf of those people who have benefited from your graft, innovation and kindness over a really significant period of dedicated service. I too thank you for all you've done and offered me. And as a bit of evidence of where it all began, for you and I at least, 1990 Adventure Magazine, a project adventure workshop at Long Bay, a really influential moment in time, starting me out, and a place that I still draw upon uh, through all that was offered. So uh, I'm not sure how I happened to have this, but uh, it's a bit of gold. Treasure in my vault, I call it. But uh, Liz, it's been our collective privilege to have developed through your teaching, and I am sincerely grateful for all that you have offered. I've always enjoyed our encounters, and I look forward to more as paths intersect, as I'm sure your influence will continue. For now, it's thank you and a modest expression of gratitude uh, through the offer from Eons of a life membership to an organization and a community that has benefited earnestly through your contribution. Sincerely from all of us, kia ora eho. Now, Liz, um, I'll give you a wee chance to have a right of reply if you like, um, but also you need to go and check in the top right-hand drawer of the dresser in the spare room for a little um, <laughs> for a little token from eons to you. So once you've had your right of reply, you can sneak up there and see um, what's hiding in the drawer. Thanks to some <laughs> sneaky work. Just come off mute though. Wow, uh, this is uh, yeah, totally, totally unexpected. Um, I am feeling very, very honored. I yeah, I totally believe in, in eons. I mean, whoa, what a trip down memory lane with some of those uh, comments. Thank you, um, Arthur and Mounty. Um, uh, yes, it did start a long time ago, Auckland Outdoor Education Teachers Association, when people like Jill Dalton and, um, um, you know, lots of, lots of people. Um, and yes, that first outdoor education conference, I think I was still at Teachers College at the time, the one in, in Wellington uh, in 1982, and, and people like um, Bert um, with his t-shirts and uh, on the the next conferences and in, in uh, 92 and 98 and and uh, yeah it's it's been great to to stay connected to this industry even though I've moved away from um, education in terms of teaching in schools I only did uh, 10 years of that um, but have, have stayed a I believe a, a passionate educator um, even though I've sort of been in a, a side periphery business um, understanding uh, yeah, it's been wonderful to, uh, uh, yeah, I've enjoyed my time <clears throat> um, staying through eons and staying connected to what was really my um, grassroots and what I started with um, uh, when, when outdoor education really became my true love rather than physical education. But, well, <laughs> yeah, this is just, as I said, very, very unexpected. I certainly um, wish eons all the best um, going forward. I think it's exciting. I'm loving listening to what, what's going on and um, yeah, all the best and, and thank you so much. It's a, it is a real honor. Sure, Liz. Now go and see what's in the drawer. Uh, so Alan, that's over to you now again. Uh, kia ora everyone. Uh, kia ora Liz. Uh, congratulations on your life membership. Uh, well deserved and um, you're a legend. So uh, what a wonderful recognition. Um, I guess keeping in the theme of amazing women, um, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to 
um, introduce uh, our first speaker for this evening, Rachel Palvin. Um, I have the privilege of working with Rachel at ARA, um, and I won't take too long, but I just want to let you know how much I appreciate her and how much all of our colleagues um, appreciate her as well. Um, she uh, is from Marlborough originally, I'm sure she'll talk about this, um, came through the Aoraki uh, Polytech program um, through, to, through to CPIT as it was known at the time um, to finish her bachelor's degree, uh, moved out into the world, spread her wings, um, worked for DOC, um, did a whole range of other things, um, sea kayak guiding, um, outdoor education roles, environmental roles, um, and then found her way back to Ara. Um, where she currently is part of our program, um, teaching into the, the Bachelor of Sustainability and Outdoor Education and leading our um, Level 3 Secondary um, Dual Pathways Certificate in Sustainability and Outdoor Ed. Um, I guess part of the reason we asked uh, Rachel to share some thoughts tonight is, um, is a, one of the things that's so amazing about her is her, her journey in becoming Tangata Titiriti. Um, and she's um, really embraced that, um, is working closely with our colleague uh, Te Ao Māori Māpiata um, and weaving um, uh, Te Ao Māori perspectives, um, Kaupapa Maturanga Māori into our programs at ARA. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a great uh, privilege to introduce Rachel and um, thanks for agreeing to speak with us and share a little bit of your journey this evening, Rach, and uh, I'll hand over to you. Kia ora, Alan. Uh, huhia ki te rangi, huhia ki te whenua, huhia ki te ngākau o ngā tangata. Ko te mea nui, ko te aroha. Tihei mauri ora. Ko, pap, ko rangi nui e tū nei, ko paputua nuku e takoto nei, tēnā korua, tēnā korua, tēnā korua. Kei ngā maunga whakahi, kei ngā wai tuku kiri, Kei ngā matawaka o te motu, ka nui te mehi. Tēnā koutou, ki a koutou, kua hui mai nei ki te kōrero-rero i tēnei kaupapa. Uh, ko wai o, he uri ahau nō tāwhiti, nō airani me ngarihi me kotirana o kūtipuna. I tai mai rātou, mā runga te waka ko Lancashire Witch me Zealandia, ki whakaraupo me te tihi o maru, uh, kamahi uh, au ki au a whenua me ona uri. I tipu aki au ki waihara keke, kamahi au ki te maunga tapu ai o uanuku, kamahi au ki te awa awatere, kamahi au ki au a tipuna mō tō uh, tāwharau mō uh, me ona mā tauranga. Kamahi au ki ngā iwi o tērā rohi. E noho ana au ki wairewa i nāia nei. Uh, ko tēnei taku whakapapa i te taha o tōku whaia, ko uh, Tess Raua, ko Jim o Kutipuna, uh, i te taha o tōku pa, mātua, uh, ko Faye Raua, ko Bruce o Kutipuna, uh, Ko Palvin tōku ingoa whānau, ko Anne Rawa, ko Les oku mātua, ko Ben tāku tūngane, ko Laura tāku teina, ko Hamish tōku whaiai pō, ko Pat tāku uh, kūri, ko Mabo tāku ngeru, uh, he akonga ahau e te reo Māori e, uh, me Te ao Māori, he kaiko ahau ki ara i te tiaki me te ako i te tai ao. He tangata tereti ahau, uh, ko Rachel taku ingoa uh, e mihi ana ki a koutou. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, so, just to briefly explain some of what I shared with you then. Um, I grew up in Marlborough, as Alan, uh, as Alan mentioned, and I have been uh, studying and working in outdoor spaces uh, for the last, uh, must be 10 years now, 
and um, that that has taken me to all different parts of uh, Te Waipo Um I am a student of Te Reo and Te Ao Māori, uh, and I'm a teacher at or a tutor at Ara, uh, teaching sustainability and outdoor education, uh, along with Alan and Dave. Um, and uh, and as Alan also mentioned, I consider myself to be Pākehā and Tangata Tiriti, um, which is a, a journey that I'm going to share, share a little bit, bit uh, with you tonight. Um, so uh, about six years ago, I took my first ever Te Reo course, and uh, that was a, a great foundational experience, but uh, since then I've, I've um, there's been ebbs and flows of my journey and I have faced challenges, many of those internalized, um, and but but also uh, had a, a great amount of learning um, on along on that journey. And um, so the the image that I have up on the screen here uh, is a uh, a great a potter cup, a, a, a mighty rako nui. Um, and the, the three questions that, I, that I've, I've put there, what have you seen, who have you met, and what can you teach us, came from an experience that I had uh, working with some students out on Orua Wairua, Blue Mine Island in the Marlborough Sounds on an Untouched World uh, Foundation program. And they were posed to the group and myself by um, a, a peer at the time and now a colleague, uh, Marama Apiata. And he set us down under this, this uh, maybe three or four hundred year old tree and, and he asked us to consider what this, um, uh, what this rako and uh, tipuna, this ancestor, might have, might have seen in its lifetime there. And as a group we considered, uh, we considered it having experienced the first interactions between James Cook and Tangata Whenua of that rohi, and we considered the learnings that that we could we could take from um, from interacting with this tree and and having those discussions, and that really was um, what. Uh, what began my uh, journey in considering how much uh, enrichment we could gain in outdoor education mm. from um, Te Ao Māori. And um, since then, uh, I've, I've done a lot more Te Reo study and I've uh, been integrating a lot of um, those uh, uh, Te Rohanga Māori, a Māori perspective into a lot of what I do. Um, however, as Pākehā, that all of that learning is just is just passing through me, and I like to consider myself a uh, a link between um, between uh, the the reading and the the listening of uh, Tangata Whenua that I do, and the Pākehā students that are predominantly our our, our cohort in um, in outdoor education. Um, and so I'm, I mentioned some challenges, and some of those challenges that I have uh, that I've faced um, uh, are around uh, what's now being termed Pākehā paralysis, and our and our challenge for our challenge to interact uh, with a Māori space, and often that's an internalised feeling of intimidation and fear of getting of getting things wrong and um, trying, to, trying to change my screen here. There we go. Uh, and in order to uh, uh, meet that, face that challenge, um, and and not fold into fear, uh, I've began to develop a better understanding of myself and my identity as a Pākehā and 
as Tangata Tariti. Uh, and there are some incredible people out there who have helped me uh, to, 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 uh, to, to come upon these learnings. One is um, a treaty educator, Jen Margaret, who has written extensively about um, being and becoming Pākehā. And this quote uh, that I'm shared with you here um, sums up, uh, I think, let's read it. If adaptation to lo local conditions is understood as a skill for success and survival, Pākehā have done abysmally and the consequences for this don't serve Pākehā and are deadly for Māori. Um, that quote there has come from uh, some writing on e tangata and uh, it says to me what the value of us becoming and understanding what Pākehā and Tangata Tariti are. Um, Alison Jones is another uh, author who I've uh, read recently, a, a book that she's published called This Pākehā Life. And, um, and this, uh, yeah, I was learning finally to think like a proper Pākehā. If Pākehā people exist in terms of our relationship with Māori, then we have to be able to think with a Māori informed point of view. Um, and so that that quote there really sums up uh, a lot of what we've the work that we've been doing at ADA um, in order to help our Pākehā students um, understand um, how they can become Tangata Tariti and how they can weave um, uh, knowledge Mātauranga Māori into uh, into their their learning and how that can enrich enrich what they are doing. Um, uh, let's skip that one. Um, and to to help support understanding of what tangata tariti could be, or or how how do we best um, honour te tariti? Uh, I've actually um, fallen. On, I've uh, I've used a lot of thinking coming from social media as well, and I think there's a really important place for social media um, for educating youth uh, if if it's done right, and um, that seems to be a really powerful way of of sharing um, important thought uh, important thinking now. And so some of these these questions were were posed by a um, a Maori. Uh, artist on on social media, and I've used these to help my students um, uh, think about how they can best honour Te Tariti. Um, uh, and so on that on that note, um, uh, a, a new level six course that we've been teaching through our bachelor's degree in sustainability and outdoor education uh, has just just come to its end. And last week, I was lucky enough to to sit down uh, in a in a wānanga in a, a circle of uh, students and uh, watch and um, experience with them the process of everybody sharing mihi. And we had some students um, facilitate uh, reflective wānangas about the process of, um, of integrating or of, of understanding themselves as, uh, as Pākehā or Māori or Tauiwi in New Zealand. And some of the, the questions that came from those students were really, really deep and uh, powerful. Um, uh, questions about trying to understand Pākehā guilt and whether that is a, a, an effective uh, or a, a useful emotion. Uh, discussing how we can best, how whether we honor and honoring Te Tiriti, oh, sorry, how honoring Te Tiriti by acknowledging diverse cultures of Aotearoa. Um, and thinking about what bias we bring from our colonial histories and um, one student uh, made a statement that if a conversation is uncomfortable or confronting, then it is probably a conversation that we need to have. Um, I uh, 
um, uh, one last one last thought that has helped to guide me and is uh, is the the questioning of why and when while we it's important that we engage in these spaces as Pākehā as well um, in order to 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 help the movement of revitalization it's important that we ask the question of why why are we using karakia in these spaces uh, why do we uh, why do we use mahi mahi and engaging in those critical questionings with our with our students as well and um, however we can um, if if we're asking those questions the 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 conclusion that I often have have had to resort back to is that uh, we need to trust that we are here for the right reasons. Um, and that I will leave it at that. Sorry, I <laughs> got a little bit flustered there and uh, missed a whole heap of stuff, but that pretty much sums up <laughs> uh, where I'm at. <laughs> Any questions? Hey, kia ora, Rachel. Thanks for that. Um, look, if, I'm sure uh, we can make um, Rachel's details available for anybody who wants to email through any, any further questions. Uh, and um, I'm sure we can uh, um, connect you if we need to. So, um, yeah, really appreciate that. Um, all right. Well, um, we'll move into our uh, next presentation from Sharon White. Um, Sharon is... Uh, a teacher at uh, Te Pā o Rakai Hautu, which is uh, a Māori medium uh, school here in, uh, in Ōtautahi Christchurch. Uh, and um, Sharon's been sitting quietly on our executive for uh, um, a, a, about a year now, um, soaking up um, uh, the complexities that is the EON's operations and um, we, uh, meanwhile, she's been doing some sterling work uh, at um, uh, Te Pai Rakoho too. So uh, we're going to give her an opportunity to share some of what she is uh, doing with her Māori students there. So, um, and just before we do that, uh, I, I neglected, I didn't notice this, but we've got a number of guests from NZAEE, the New Zealand Association of uh, Environmental Educators. Uh, so really, really pleased to see you lot here. Chris, Chris. Jill and Robin, uh, thanks for um, uh, for tuning in. But uh, without further ado, we'll hand over to uh, to Sharon. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, kia ora koutou. Um, ko tēnei te mihi atu, kia koutou katoa. Um, ai ko whai Sharon tōku ingoa. Um, he uria hau ngō ngā te kahununu. Um, he kai hautu um, kei te pā o rā kai hautu, um, a rā kei o tautahi. Um, so, I don't have a fancy slideshow like Rachel. <laughs> I started one, but then I keep changing whereabouts I was going to go tonight. So, I did have a, um, a video that I was going to just have on in the background while I spoke, but then I realised looking at the screen, you still see me anyway. Um, I guess if I just give a bit of background about myself, also it might help shape where I'm coming from. So um, born and raised up in Hawke's Bay, Hastings, and um, I trained as a phys ed, outdoor education, health teacher um, way back when, and my very first job, Fiona was my head of faculty. And... Um, <laughs> And I, so I started at Kaipoi and Arthur was um, still around in Kaipoi as well back then. And, um, and it was great. That's exactly where I wanted to be because I was passionate about outdoor education. Um, I had started at um, OPC and then realised I kind of felt that connection with the kids um, wanting to experience the outdoors. So it sort of led me in the teaching sector. But while teaching, I was I was Māori, I had the deal, and I found myself making the loneliest decision ever, and I actually started teaching to deal. So I went from this massive PE department to just me. And and it, and it was challenging. Um, 
but I found myself now in a place where I'm blending all of those worlds together. So um, Te Pa is a special character um, area school, but it is um, based in the city in Christchurch. So um, we have, it's 250 students, but that goes from babies through to year 13. And in Te Waka Uruwa, which is years 11 to 13, we have 40 students. Um, so we have the unique ability to shape our program around our kids. Um, but being Māori medium, a lot of what we do is obviously um, through Māori perspective, Māori values, and everything we do. So we call Te Pā or Rākau Hotu, and Rākau Hotu is the tangata, the um, rangatahi, the rangatira, sorry, whom we are named after. And so it's his values and his personal qualities that we try to thread into everything. So there was a few different ways that I was going to go tonight, but um, I really like where Rachel um, had started, which is, I was thinking it was a really good place for me to jump in. I've just been part of um, the NZ, NCEA review team down in um, Ōtautahi talking to schools about the impending changes that are happening in the mana orite mō Mātauranga Māori, which is going to be the realisation, I guess, of um, Māori and how it looks in um, our subjects on a, an assessment basis. And um, a lot of the schools, the feedback that we'll be getting so far is that they would just love to see how that looks, um, examples of something that, because um, there's not a lot of resources available either for schools to be able to grab and use in their programs. So I just thought perhaps I could give a wee glimpse of something that we are currently doing. Um, and it does probably jump on the back of exactly what Rachel was talking about with the Rako and how it, um, what it has seen in its life. And so um, one of the, there's a professor, or well not a, probably not a doctor, she's a doctor, Dr. Naomi Simmons. Um, she's done a lot of, a lot of work and one of her latest um, research methodologies is actually on how um, the whenua retains memories. It, um, and it is a legit um, academic, um, it's a real thing. And so, and because we've done a lot of work with um, Ihi Hiki, Dr. Ihi Hiki also with the Atua Matua framework, all of these things sort of blend in together. And it kind of, well, for, for me personally, when I first learned about these things, it was just a massive aha moment. So when you go into the outdoors and you just let go and it's just like oh, that is your actual wairua connecting with the memories the atua maori environment that you have stepped into and um and it's a sign that you are meant to be there and it has stories to tell you so one of the things that we do with our year 11 um students is um, we take them up to Nelson Lakes. So uh, Rakai Hotu's story is that um, his first lakes that he dug out with his core were up in the Nelson Lakes. So we take them up there. And it's been about four or five years in a row that we've done this particular. So we do it in the last term of, uh, oh, sorry, the last week of each term. And the whole term is basically leading up to that. So we um, don't have outdoor ed as a subject explicitly it is just something that we do that whole place-based learning um I mean, i'm preaching to the converted we know how rich it is um all those learning experiences talk about the ocean you go to the ocean um so it is basically what we um we do so we take them there we do things such as math so we can do numeric reasoning because you're preparing for that Heidinger. There's the measurement, looking at the maps, the water volumes, um, science, landscapes, heat, um, that learning about the eels in that environment. Well, I've found that personally fascinating. The migrations, the all of that kind of stuff is amazing. English, you have your um, keeping a record, your reflections, your creative writing, your poetry, um, <laughs> um, PE obviously is an easy one. There's a truckload of um, field Māori um, 
standards and so um, Fee put me onto some other ones which we did do Fee and the kids are finishing those off about the um, Rako and um, birds which was um, really awesome and so there's a lot of um, I guess what this comes from is the grabbing your school's narrative so whatever the narrative is and and our oh, doesn't matter where you are in Aotearoa there are rich narratives around wherever the schools are placed and it's a matter of finding those um just becoming familiar even if it's a little bit at a time and making those connections with the kids so just to make those learning um experiences a little bit richer so for example, when we're doing river crossing, it is also knowing that the freshwater um, guardian or the atua is part of whenua mea, and rangahu is the guardian of the river rocks. And so those two things work um, explicitly well together. So they are everywhere together. And wherever part of whenua mea is, so is rangahu, and they he actually guides the pathway for her. And they work in unison. And, and it's a really positive relationships, but you can, the more that you get to know about that, the more it makes sense with the water dynamics and the water safety, because you are coming from a slightly different perspective where it's about respect as well as safety. Um, home economics, we even use that one for the nutritional, um, there's a planning your um food for the the week that fed into that so easily there's so many things that could have fed that into into that term and just about every year we do it differently we give every subject teacher you know we plan together um and then the tramp essentially acts like a an assessment at the end of the term for for all of those things um but obviously the tanga that comes out of that and the rich rich um, you know, you're in the middle of the track, it's getting dark, these kids are cold and they're hungry, and you talk about how if there were no tracks, no water taxis, no um, GPSs and cell phones and lights and huts to get to, why would all of these people follow Rakai Hotu into something like that, knowing that he's never been there himself? You know, so all of those leadership qualities um, and trust um, really come out and, and the kids it, it's a real it's a real thing for those kids when they're in those spaces to dig deep and think about what you're going to take from that tramp back to te pā. Um, because our kids are also the tōkana of these babies at te pā, so it's really important what they um, what they bring back and they and they live like every day um, the other special thing about going to Nelson Lakes is that in that visitor centre um, not only do they have a plethora of information they have a huge um, monument inside there of Rākai Hotu so these kids um, they get that connection and they have stories in there as well so they get really excited um, about that because they're like oh look there we are um, and you know in every school probably have that same um, resource um, close by you know and, and, and all those stories are different but it's sort of just making those connections and the, re the resources are out there I mean um, Runanga and Iwi are around they all have a lot of resources but I get that they're not always that easy to tap into they're not always easily accessible um, but they do want their stories told and they want them told correctly. So I um, I do believe that they, you know, are happy to be researched. I don't, Ngai Tahu have so much information. I was at a kahui ako, um the other day and there was someone delivering and there's all these resources that I'd never seen or heard of before. So, um, yeah, it is about just trying to make those connections. Um, what else have I got here? Fee told me to talk for like five minutes, so I I feel like that's five minutes already. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. I know that there's a lot of um, teachers out there that are, are nervous about these changes with um, NCEA and, and the inclusion of the um, Mataranga Māori and, and it having to be in there. So, um, and I, but I think that the outdoor space is perfect for it. It's it's rich with. Um, opportunities and information and and I look forward to seeing what um, schools and, and teachers are doing um, yeah 
I'm not sure if that was helpful. I hope it was something, but um, <laughs> hi, Kilda. Hey, kia ora, Sharon. Uh, that was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing that. And uh, look, um, I'm sure uh, that's just going to spur a lot of us to ask more and uh, ask for, um, you know, the, the same story again. So, uh, yeah, we really appreciate that. Thanks for sharing. Um, right, folks, just got one more little um, uh, task before we go, uh, before we sign off. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand over to Mike Boys again uh, for one final uh, word. So, Mike, if you're ready to go. Um, kia ora, Phil. Uh, it's my pleasure again to announce a second very significant honour of the evening. This time to mark an extraordinary contribution to Eons that we're extremely grateful for and will always remember. I have pleasure in announcing a life membership of our association for Catherine Capelli. And I can hear applause. I think it's difficult to think of anyone in the history of our organisation who has given more than Catherine. She's been the constant, the phenomenon, the tall footballer, the engine room, and the public face of EONS for a very long time. I think of the depth of organisational knowledge, the political liaisons, the positive conversations, the unpaid hours, and all accompanied by a very warm smile. I don't think the organisation would be where it is today without Catherine. This award certainly marks an outstanding contribution. I have pleasure to pass to my good friends, Liz Devonard and Fiona MacDonald, who will tell us more about Catherine's enduring legacy. Uh, can everybody hear me? Kia ora, Tefano. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear? Yeah, we can hear you. Great, thank you. Well, I'm really privileged to speak on behalf of Catherine, a very well-deserved life membership. Catherine, we should take our hats off to this exceptional woman. She's been at the helm and has been the glue that has held eons together for 12 plus years as chief executive, a collaborative guide, an exceptional administrator. Catherine joined eons exec in I think about two, 2006 as exec, and as an executive officer in 2009 after a little bit of a blip and challenges that we had with the uh, with, uh, with ons during her time she's guided the organization through upskilling and modernizing eons into the 20th century that has included changes in technology which she em has embraced with websites emails newsletters accounts registrations for courses Changes in movements, example, which we've already heard about today was changes in towards a place-based education and much more. Changes in the way EONS does business, e.g. the Zoom. <laughs> we always used to meet together in other people's houses. 
she's seen big changes with with the sector the water safety council changing the mountain safety ons of course and skill active so she's really been part of all those changes that have occurred in the outdoors personally i can't speak highly enough about her passion and her commitment to eons this life membership is thoroughly deserved i thought through some of the words that i could could um describe catherine outstanding and totally committed to the to educating outdoors a tireless worker collaborative and a great team player and a mentor mentor to many passionate and enthusiastic generous and thoroughly nice person always warm and welcoming willing to share a family and a home with on numbers of occasions let's celebrate our good fortune in having her as our executive officer it's sad to see her step down but we're happy to see her expand her horizons and explore her next adventure a well deserved life membership thank you sure Liz. Uh, so just a few words from me catherine um, you have as everyone has said been the absolute backbone of eons um, i've loved working with you and crafting all those funding applications and sorting out budgets um, i really miss picking up the phone and tapping into your encyclopedic knowledge about where a piece of information might be filed. Um, got some joy around that at the moment, thank you. Uh, or, you know, just your knowledge of which school one of our members might work at. Um, you've done such an amazing job of developing EONS into the organisation it is today um, and getting it ready to hand over. Uh, I know your garden's going to be looking amazing next summer. Um, and there's going to be some lucky cause out there that benefits from your time, patience and the thoughtfulness um, that you have, as much as Eons has. Um, so I wish you all the very best, and I know I'll be out to visit. Um, so thank you for all you've done for the organisation and for me over all the years we've worked together. Um, I know there's other exec members um, and people with us that will want to have um, add their thoughts. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Alan now. I think he's got something to say. Uh, kia ora, Fee, thank you. Um, uh, kia ora, Catherine. Uh, I just wanted to say a huge thanks and congratulations to your life membership. Um, uh, as long as I've been involved with EONS, um, you've you've been around, and um, you know I think we were we started on the exec and stuff at similar times and and then i took a bit of a break of course to head over to tassie and then um you know it's been such a, a privilege to work with you um over all those years um and uh, you know i just echo everything that's been said i think you're fantastic um and we've been so lucky to to have you um i also wish you uh, all the best um as you move on to your next adventures um and uh and go well so uh yeah Kakite and Namahi uh, Nui. Kia ora, Alan. And I, I just need to point out the photo to Catherine. Catherine has a very small social media footprint. So this is a reasonably aged photo <laughs> from a row, uh, rowing regatta um, I think it's the Masters in Dunedin, quite some time ago, where you had your photo in the paper, and I tracked you down. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anyone I'm else? Fiona. <laughs> yeah, no one's safe. Um, is there anyone else that'd like to jump in and say anything before we give Catherine the right of reply? Catherine, I'd just like to echo the words of everybody else. It's been wonderful working with you for the last decade and um, uh, uh, you're leaving a, you know, awfully big set of shoes to, for us all to occupy. So kia ora, I wish you well. Um, 
Mike here from Mountain Safety Council. Uh, just Catherine, it's uh, been an amazing uh, six or seven years at uh, the MSC when my, my, my time has worked alongside EONS and uh, I, I can just like personally thank you for, um, and, and the whole of EONS, but particularly yourself in terms of uh, being very visibly supportive of the changes the MSC made some, some, some time ago um, at a time where we needed you know, critical and visible um, support for those. So uh, it's been a, it's great to see someone like yourself um, to be able to front that, but uh, it's also amazing to see someone like yourself be able to take some time to put some energy back into yourself again. So uh, just reflecting all the positive things that have been said to you tonight. So it's great working with you. All right, Catherine. <laughs> uh, told you you couldn't escape eons. <laughs> you made your life member to make sure you didn't. <laughs> uh, kia ora. Thank you, uh, everyone, for, for your hugely uh, kind words. Uh, I'm just a little bit um, overcome, actually. Uh, uh, Two things, um, two things that really come to mind. And the first is when I was about uh, uh, 10, I suppose, um, a, per a, a, a person who, um, who I admired greatly um, had just said, had said to me, I can't remember what the context was, but she said, Catherine, just always be the best person you can be. And everywhere I have gone, from that time onward into a new space or facing something, it's right, just do the best job you can. Just, just do the best job you can. Um, and the other, the other thought um, that uh, has always, and, and some of you will have heard this from me before, but um, uh, some of, of, of what has driven me, or it's not that it's, driven me but some of the reason for for having having stayed with eons has been because of um, the space that it, it, it enabled me to be and I I I, I have to think of uh, those early years when I first met the executive I actually um, joined um, Eons Canterbury in about 1999, I think, and um, in about 2000 or 2001, Arthur might know, um, I actually volunteered to join the National Executive because they, they needed to put somebody forward. And I said, oh, I'll give it a go. And Bert was in the room and Arthur was in the room and, um, um, and Bert was looking to move away from the executive. So, um, that's, that's when I first uh, joined the EONS executive. And Mike Boyce was chair and, uh, and Arthur was in the background, but Arthur came to the fore again later on. But it's, it had always been about, um, about a group of people and, and the power of doing so much more than what you can do on your own. And um, and all the years um, of, or oh, well, in the last 20 years, then when I have been moving through various iterations of um, being an educator um, with its challenges, EONS was always there as a real constant. And it was because I, I was accepted, I felt comfortable, I felt I could make a contribution and I knew that the contribution was valued just like any contribution that that people do make in, in our space is a valued contribution. Um, and uh, yeah, the time was right for me to go. It wasn't, uh, I, I, saw, I saw the moment, um, it needed an awful lot of planning. I actually um, gave my notice uh, six months before I left. <laughs> I, I kind of knew it would take a long time to transition out. And it did, but you know, I know that it's in a good place, and um, you know, 
I'm still here too. So thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm I'm just yeah, I can't say anything else really. I'm just still overwhelmed. <laughs> Kia ora. Yeah, I think I think a round of applause from everybody, uh, Catherine. Um, yeah, uh, and such a, a delight to be able to uh, give you um, or uh, to appoint you to a, a, a life membership. So, folks, it's uh, it's getting on, uh, and I think it's probably time to draw the meeting to a close. Uh, I, I'm, you know, really gratified to see the number of you showing. Uh, uh, an interest in, in the AGM and um, uh, look, I hope uh, hope you enjoyed those presentations um, and uh, they give you food for thought. Uh, we're going to finish with a, uh, a karakia for Whakamutunga. Um, so um, we'll um, we'll do that and then um, we'll sign out. So ke uh, tōti rangi māri e, o ranganui e tu ihi nei, o papatuanuku o tākota nei. E te, o te taiao e āwhi nei ki runga i te ia tātou tihei mauri ora. Folks, thanks very much. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you all.